London, one of the most lucrative property markets in the entire world. Take this house, for example. In the last two years, it's doubled in value. It was worth £120,000, now £240,000. Well, that's good news if you're selling, but a complete nightmare for first-time buyers. So, how do you get on the property ladder if you've got less money to spend than the average London house price? Well, that's our challenge, to find someone a home here in the city for £100,000. We're professional house hunters, and our job is to make sure the buyer gets the best possible property for the best possible price. Whether you're looking for a loft in the city or a little place in the country, we can track it down. Over the next eight weeks, we'll be finding properties for people who need to move but want a little help. And with only one long weekend to find them the house of their dreams, it's a race against the clock. Kate Pybus is a serial renter and she's worried that she's been left behind by the London property market. Kate is a 28-year-old first-time buyer and works as a copywriter for an advertising agency. She's tried to buy property on two previous occasions but has always got cold feet at the last minute and presently rents in Islington with her brother. This is my brother. He's always on the phone <laughs> and he's on the phone again. She loves her rented flat because it's so convenient for her work and it's got buckets of space. This is a huge, huge room. And if you owned a flat like this, God knows what you could do with it. Put in... Anyway, I don't. This is um, the first ever life drawing I did, which I do love because it reminds me of my mum. It looks like her, even though it's not actually her. Um, and I hope that when I move into this new, this new space, I'll have lots of room to do art and things like that. This is my perfect life, imaginary perfect life. So our first job is going to be a tricky one, to find the same luxuries Kate currently enjoys within her budget of only £100,000. What's your main priority and what you're looking for? Two things, really. It's a combination of location and space. Right. Don't want to be too far from the centre, but I do want to be able to afford enough space to not feel cramped. I like making things, like painting and sewing and stuff, so I need quite a bit of space for that. It's all a jigsaw, isn't it, with, yeah. with the yeah. space, the area, and the money. We'll just work with the budget. What, what you can find for the, for the money, we'll, we will find. Good. The area we're starting our search in is Hackney, the cheapest area of inner London. Situated northeast of the city centre, it's an area where bargains can still be found, but not for much longer. Prices in Hackney have risen a whopping 80% in the last five years. That's compared with 40% for the rest of London. Which means that the average price for a two-bed flat in this area is £108,000, compared to a national average of £79,000. The boom in East London began with people who couldn't afford to buy in West London, buying up and converting old warehouses and factories that had been empty for a number of years. And now the property developers have moved in and prices are reaching new highs. Our first viewing today is Digby Works, an industrial building being converted into luxury apartments. Are you really serious this is the building? Yeah, no, yes. no, no, we're dead serious. It's here. beautiful. Well, let's stop there. It's a beautiful building. We got that far. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> well, let's okay. get in there then. Yeah. yeah. Come on, come on, come on. We're looking at a one-bedroom, open-plan studio flat, priced at 132000 It's situated in Hackney and close enough to work for Kate to consider. It's a massive space. Think about how someone would actually use it. If you've got a bed at, bedroom in that end... Dining. Yeah. Well, what's happening in there? If your dining's in there, what's happening there? TV here, yeah. maybe, and dining down there. What on earth? Well, that could be a study space. But in terms of aesthetics, it's a nice oh, yeah. space. Oh, yeah, in terms of aesthetics, it's a fantastic space. Mm. It's a big space, 813 square feet. I think it's been really badly used. While the asking price is way over Kate's budget, some of these properties are presently unfinished and we're hoping to negotiate that price down. I imagine they're planning to do it up in the same way, but... There's, al there's always a chance to, to sort of do a deal. Yeah. With things like this, you can arrange to do anything. It's all about negotiation. It's all about negotiation. I think yeah. it's beautiful. It's ideal, in fact. This is very, very close to, to something that I would not have imagined I could have got. Really? Good. Yeah. <laughs> You're happy, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so am I sensing if we sort out the money, we've got the right place? I'm not going to say that. No. <laughs> Phil, he just wants to go. He wants <laughs> to go home. One thing, mm. the agent said to you, "Do you like them?" 
And you said yes, I think they're fantastic. I didn't say fantastic, I said I loved it. Yeah, overly enthusiastic. Yeah, but I was lying. Yeah, well, don't. <laughs> what was I supposed when to when say? It, you were supposed to say, go, yeah, mm. OK, mm. yeah, no, not sure, you mm. know. So that when we come to him, if we came to him with an offer, he couldn't say, well, I thought she really liked them. You know, I'm not going to take anything less than the asking price. If you come out of the, the, the flat that you think is... Um, the real one. ..is the real one, yeah. and, and it's the right money, the last thing you should be doing is jumping up and down and going, right. yes, we've got it. Yeah. Come on. If you're viewing a lot of properties, it's a good idea to take photos. At the end of the day, it'll help you discount any definite no's and refresh your memory on the good ones. Although Kate loves Digby Works, it won't be ready to live in for another three months and she has to move out in one. Add to that the poor room layout and Digby Works is struck off the list of possibilities. On the way to our next viewing, we spot a sign for a property under development. We decide to stop and ask a few questions. Let's see if we can move, I can move back away from this car. Hello. Hi. Um, Hello. One of them just <laughs> brought you for a couple of Something moments. Outside my house. Um, we're, we're trying to find Kate a flat or a house in the area, and we just saw a board down there. Wondering if you could just tell us a bit of information or anything you knew about the building. It's very nice. Do you know what was actually sold down the, down the end? I'm not sure, but I think it possibly was the car park. <laughs> this here. Right. Now, yes, Kate wants to live in the car park. Right. She's just here. Um, which has just been sold last week, it went to auction. Yeah. The fact that that parking space has been sold, it just proves what we've been saying all along. Property, any kind of property in London, however small, has got more and more and more expensive to a point where if you've got a very small amount of money to invest, you could actually buy a parking space and it will go up in value. Cleverley's Road is next on the list. It's a mid-terrace, first floor flat with one bedroom. The asking price is 107,000. It's a, it's quite a nice big room with a bay window. Yeah, it is. Have you seen that? There's likely to be quite a big loft up there. Because mm. that could mean you could have a second room. As I mean, and when, I know... as and when finance allows, yeah. you, yeah. you could expand up into the loft. Thinking of a loft extension. It can add to the value of your property and take care of your expanding family at the same time. A smart idea all round. First, measure the space available, making sure you have the headroom required. Secondly, lofts need stairs, so make sure there's enough floor space to fit a set in. And finally, you need planning permission. Check with the neighbours. If they didn't get it, you won't either, and you could be sorry. Huge bathroom. It's a big bathroom for the flat. Well, it's a yeah. lovely bathroom. It's beautiful. These, yeah. these windows up here as well. I think this is a reasonably good sized yeah. one bed. The bedroom's big, the sitting room's a good size, yeah. the kitchen you can eat in. There's a really big bathroom with a window, and there's this lovely room with a bay window. So, Cleveley's Road is perfect in terms of space, rooms, and character. The ability to expand into the loft means that it rates very highly in the investment stakes. But the journey time of over one hour to work means that Kate discounts the flat immediately, and so our search continues. The next property is Arcadia Court, perfectly situated just one minute away from Liverpool Street Station. At 120,000, it looks expensive for a one-bed apartment, so it needs to be something special. It's amazing. Who would have thought this was behind here? Yeah. Wow. Such little oasis. Living room. That room is making it seem a lot bigger. Yeah, it's it a nice is, size it? room. Yeah. It's featureless. But lovely. But lovely and Totally nice. different feel. It's yeah. not cluttered, which no. makes it. But the outlook at that window, you yeah. could, it's just fantastic. When you've got a lot of hanging space, built in hanging space, yeah. you don't need any extra furniture. Good. Well, that's so useful. That's something that you were looking <laughs> for, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I mean, given that this flat is at the top end of your budget, yeah. you haven't got anything extra to spend on things like putting yeah. in. This yeah. is small. This is small. Yeah. But you've got enough work surfaces. No, but you've but you got a lot of storage. You couldn't you? need you've got... them here. No. 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 This is not. That's why that table's in the sitting room. Yeah. It's a very nice well, flat. Well, she sat at home. <laughs> she sat down. <laughs> making stuff at home. It's, it's a very a nice flat. News. It's a good flat. Mm. Good Try to flat. discover all you can about why the property is on the market. Knowledge is bargaining power, and in a seller's market, you need all the help you can get. I've just had a word with the agent. Yeah. Um, he's leaving because he wants a bigger place. Right. But importantly, he's found a bigger place, and he's made an offer on a bigger ah. place, which he can't proceed with. 
until, until he has his son of us. Kate, what is the maximum you could afford? I don't really think I can afford 120. What could you afford? Uh, possibly 110. How much you can afford is relative to how much yeah. you want this place. Yeah. And perhaps we should be thinking about not how much you can afford, but how much you like it. Another great thing about Arcadia Court is its roof terrace. We've just been talking about buying outside space and houses with gardens, flats with roof terraces. There's always going to be less people in the market for that sort of thing through the winter months. Can be an idea, buy a, a house with a garden or a flat with a roof terrace in November and December and sell it again in, in the spring or in the summer. By buying something where there isn't the demand for the outside space and selling it when there is, you can make yourself good money. As you look at those really, really modern flats. Yeah, I think that might set you back a bit more than you <laughs> God knows what that flat's worth. I mean, it must be more than a million pounds. Mm. Way more than a million yeah. pounds. Best location you could possibly ask for. OK. Good. Onwards. Kate likes Arcadia Court. The journey to work is short, and she feels the location is perfect for her. The building has character, and it's one of the few flats we've seen with any outdoor space. And despite the rooms being on the small size, she's starting to think about raising her budget. This is where taking photos comes in handy. We've only seen three properties and already Kate has to make decisions. And that was the first one. I like it, um, but no, no, I've got to, got to scrub it. Okay. I'm not gonna buy it, so. That um, was possibly. the second one. It sort of feels like um, it's a bit of an older person's, or it's sort of a, it's a slightly suburban road. Mm -hmm. This is Arcadia. I really like this one. Love it because it's so central, yeah. urban. Um, I just liked it. Well, um, we've got some more things to see, so uh, think about what you've seen so far and let's yeah. go home. After the break, we find Kate's dream flat. It's Peter from Phillips Estate. Hi, Peter. Hi. How did you get on? Have you spoken with the vendor? But can we get her offer accepted? It's our second day flat hunting with Kate Pybus, who has 100000 to spend on a one- or two-bedroom property in East London. After yesterday, Arcadia Court is the front runner. It fits the bill in every way, but at 120000 it'll need some hard negotiation to get the right deal. Our first property of day two is Gould Terrace. On the market at 90000 it's a one-bedroom split-level flat above a shop in Hackney's High Street, an area that Kate likes. The bus that runs right outside her window would take her to work in less than an hour. Oh, a lovely rooftop view. Oh, this is lovely, lovely room. I love attic rooms. Be very happy here. Yeah. I can see no. myself lying down on a bed here. Yeah. yeah very it's nice. It's a really yeah. nice, huge bedroom. This is horrible. Okay. It's horrible. This kitchen is horrible. Yeah. It needs completely redoing. Yeah. We spotted this. And it's a, it's a patch of damp. Now, this has obviously been recently repainted, this house, and it's already come through. Now, if you have a look at the window, yeah. look up there to where the damp might be coming through. Do you see the top of the building in that far corner? Yeah. It's not in very good nick at all. It's been patched up a couple of times. Oh, God. Oh, dear. What? What's wrong? Well, it's not necessarily <laughs> a downside, but look. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, there's a big light. There's a street lamp. Yeah, I mean, it would never be dark in this room. Someone's come in here, repainted it, tidied it up, spent a bit of money on it, and they've made it quite seductive. But I think it may be hiding a multitude of sins. We're going to the high street to see what shop the property is over. This could be a potential deal breaker. It's actually above a baker's shop. If Greg's the baker's were to close, that unit itself, forget yeah, who's in yeah. it, that unit it could be has permission yeah. for A3 use. So if that was to move out, you could end up with a curry house or a fish and chip shop. If you look at the whole terrace, it's just this section which is yeah. in such bad repair, and there's that great big light. And the light is huge. It's huge, it? but also above the great big light, there's a great big plant sticking yeah. out of your roof. I called through to the council to check the uses, to check who owns the usage and to generally investigate what's going on in the local mm. area would be a very good thing. Although Kate likes school Terrace, the answers to our questions Great. are not reassuring enough for it to be on her shortlist. <laughs> Empire Wharf is a modern block, which promised a view over a park and a canal. 
However, the flat we viewed was on the wrong side of the building and looked out over a main road. She hated it. It doesn't have the views as we were, mm. as we thought it did, so yeah. we're on. OK, on to the next thing. Kate liked the Art Deco style of the Strand. It was well situated for her journey to work and had two bedrooms. Fingers and toes. But for 125,000, the flat was small and airless and made her feel claustrophobic. So your first impressions of the building were obviously the building is beautiful, very encouraging. But I don't like flat. OK, why was feel, that? feel trapped. So nothing today has appealed to Kate. Arcadia Court is still her first choice, and with only two days left, it's looking more inviting by the minute. It's day three. Overnight, Kate has decided that Arcadia Court has real potential and asked us to arrange a second viewing. Hello, can I help? Hello, yeah, um, my name's Phil. Um, I'm ringing about 42 Arcadia Court. And Sarge showed us the flat on Saturday. Yeah. She's very interested in the flat. Right. Um, wondering, uh, A, is it still available? Uh, we did actually take an offer on that one yesterday. So there's one offer on the table? Yep. Are there any other flats available in the building? Because she's very keen on that block. Right, no, they, we did have one other, but that one's going ahead on the sale now. They've got another offer on the table. It has been accepted. It's been accepted. With Arcadia Court out of the running and nothing else in the frame, the race is on to gather new details and arrange more viewings. While I'm on the phone to agents, Phil is out on the street, looking out for skips, scaffolding and other signs of building work. Property with work in progress may be coming on the market in the near future. So if you see any builders, don't be shy. Stop and ask them about the property. You never know, it might be for sale. There's a big skip there and a, what looks like a mansion block covered in scaffolding. Hello? The London market's a fast one. On average, one-bedroom flats are going under offer within three days, an exchange of contracts occurring within two weeks. No, we drew a blank, I'm afraid. Although, seeing that... We could be a bit late. Bargains can only be found by being proactive. There's another one we've missed. So get out there and find properties before estate agents get their hands on them. You could find yourself saving thousands of pounds. Sale agreed. I don't think we'll be seeing that flat on the market for another five years, so that's another missed. It's the morning of the fourth and final day. If we're going to achieve our goal, we need to get moving. Prince George Road is the last hope. At 105,000, it's only marginally over Kate's original budget and has plenty of room. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Once inside, we can see that this flat is good value. The kitchen makes a great first impression. Lovely sunny kitchen. Yeah, lovely. Very nice and bright. The bedroom's a decent size and has been well presented for viewing. Somebody's cleaned, they've cleaned the windows, which is... Not good so, does. Yeah, did good you side. notice I didn't do that when you came into my house? Do you remember that other house we saw where you, with the Where loft? the stairs would be hard to put in? They'd yeah, be easier yeah, they'd be here, much they? easier here. you just build yeah. them straight up. Yeah, much easier here. Yeah, there's plenty of room to put in another flight. Yeah. Which yeah. would give you your second bedroom. Yeah. yeah. And possibly another bathroom. The attic appears to have the potential to be converted, giving Kate the investment potential she desires. But the real selling point of this flat is its large, bright living room. And, and the corner sink has gone. But it's a nice bright area. Yeah, room. but you could easily reinstate that fireplace and slap some corner sink back up. It's 105,000. No, I think it's a great this flat. This is an 85-year lease. It's a great flat. Um, you've got the option of the second bedroom, as and when money easily and accessible. money I are think, out. Uh, I think it's worth looking at transport again. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because this is another no-chew bus route. Having spoken to the vendor, we discover that an offer has already been made on this house, but not yet accepted. I'm on the phone to London Travel Information to find out if Kate could get to work within one hour. So we've got a journey time of 45 minutes. Sorry, what was that? Plus 10 waiting. OK. OK. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Okay. Prince George Road has got the lot, space, character and the potential to convert the loft. However, someone else agrees and with another offer on the table, it looks like this one's going to the wire. So while Kate ponders her choices, let's see what else is on the market for £100,000. How about a tower house with extensive views and 10 acres of land in County Cork? 
It's in need of complete refurbishment, but it's well priced at 110,000. If you like the idea of playing the country square, take a look at the 16th century Ravenstone Castle, which has 34 acres and the possibility of a barony title. Offers over 100,000, please. If you like your challenges a little less daunting, then the old school close to York could be for you. It has a large entrance hall, three classrooms, an office, WC and changing rooms, all for the asking price of 100,000. If you have more to spend, how about an apartment in the Grade 2 listed Old Stable Yard near Kendall? A ground and first floor property here could be yours for 145000 But if you're looking to spend less, then you could move to Glasgow's West End into a two-bedroom, one public room property smack in the heart of the city. Offers over 68500 please. Time's up. With no more viewings to do, it's decision time. Having already lost Arcadia Court to a faster buyer, Kate knows she has to act quickly. We headed to a quiet bar to think things through. Because Prince George's Road. Yeah, this is my favourite, definitely. A clear favourite? Yeah, definitely. Lovely, homey feeling. Um, while I would never have thought of Stoke Newington before, I think it's quite nice. Mm -hmm. It's um, the one. You think that's the yeah, one? Yeah, I'd like to put in an offer. So what offer do you suggest? Well, um, mm. Mm. if the other offer has been very close, and yeah. it, supposing it's 103, 104, I don't like offering an asking price as an opening Professionally bid. Professionally speaking, yeah. it's, no it's not good yeah. practice. No. If we go in at 103, if that matches the old offer or beats it or is underneath it, I think his immediate reaction will be to say so. I think he'll say, well, they've already had an offer 103 and they turned it down. Mm -hmm. In which case we'll know immediately mm. within the same conversation that we can offer 104. But every penny counts of in course. this situation. Every penny. And if we could just, you know, save Kate just a thousand pounds off the asking mm -hmm. price, that's a thousand pounds worth of mm. interior decor, so sudden, the you know. And the legals. Yeah. If we went in at 103 and he says no, we say, yeah. well, look, that's really at the top of our budget. Yeah. On the condition that we have this exclusive and you meet our time scales, then we'll go to 104 or 105. It could be a nice way of adding in those conditions. So this is where I really don't want to lose it. If you want this, we'll get it for you, Kate. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That's all I want to hear. I yeah. do want it. <clears throat> I think this bit. <laughs> Energy Safe, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Could I speak to Peter or Ian, please? Uh, Ian speaking. Ian, hi. My name's Phil Spencer. Yeah. I'm uh, acting on behalf of Kate Pybus. Right. She'd like to put forward 103,000. Right, okay. Are you able to give me an indication of where we're at um, as opposed to the other offer that, uh, that's lurking? I mean, that's, that's something that I can't really, um, you know, right. divulge. I would, I would firmly recommend that this, this, this offer um, you would firm, you, you would firmly recommend would, this I, offer? Yeah, I would. Excellent, that's very kind. All right, lovely. Speak to you later. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Well, there we go, people. 103 gets his recommendation. Fingers crossed. That's unlucky Hello. Hello, is that Phil? It is, yes. Hi, yeah. Uh, it's Peter from Phillips Estate. Hi, Peter. Hi. How did you get on? Have you spoken with the vendor? Yep, we've spoken to them and they've agreed to 103. They've agreed. Excellent yep, news. Take that. Thank you very much for your help, Peter. Pleasure. Very good news. All the best. Thanks. Uh, Bye. Bye. <laughs> guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? Look. No, especially. Oh, just in case. Can I do it? Can I do it? Yeah, you do it. Yeah, yeah, I was no, always no, wanted no, to do this, Kirsty. At the moment, Kate's house purchase is proceeding normally and she hopes to complete soon. So we're off to a great start. Join us next week for more house buying antics.